More than 4 billion people live on this vast continent called Asia, and we are telling their stories. On this edition, healing from war and personal battles. There's an amazing story. I'm Greg Navarro, and this is Assignment Asia. Decades of bloodshed in Afghanistan have left the economy and society in tatters. Jack Barton was in the capital city of Kabul to see how people are rebuilding their lives there in the midst of all the uncertainty. Coffins. Made ready for sale on the streets of Kabul there is a daily struggle to meet rising demand. From the Soviet invasion to the civil war, to the start of what is now the United States' longest running conflict, Afghanistan has endured four decades of non stop bloodshed. The fighting is only intensifying. The United Nations says more civilians were killed in the second half of 2019 than over the past decade. Women and children accounted for more than 40% of civilian casualties. Then there are the hundreds of thousands injured over the past decades. <laughs> Nasima was treated at this Red Cross clinic, but also retrained and offered a job, a lifeline in Afghanistan's war-torn economy, in which foreign aid reportedly accounts for 90% of GDP. <laughs> This Red Cross clinic is located in the Afghan capital where the population has grown from around one and a half million at the time of the US-led invasion to what is, by some estimates, almost six million today. Kabul is one of the world's fastest growing cities. The draw of economic possibilities is one factor, but the driving force is growing insecurity across the countryside because of the Taliban advance. Nur Muhammad and his family are still finding ways to survive, having fled to Kabul from the northern province of Balkh, where until very recently there was little Taliban or ISIL presence. Jang shud joy mal tole va madani bache kum raftar maktab mera fa bache ma ki vakti main bola kat pa kuch khad shud khad si poy shapush aizano joy mo bissar masani mo tu vakti mandqam aram ma talib giroft va jang shud bissar. 
وضعیت ما در خراب شد اصلا روز ماتیر نشد از اینجا خیلی ما آمدیم ماجر شدیم در کابل آمده بودیم بریم شاید هم روزی ما به داخل شاید خوب تر تیر شده اینجا نور محمد یوزیز ا ویل بارو تو ترانسپورت بیلدنگ متریالز ارنگ دی اکویولنت آف اپ تو ون دولار ان توینتی سنس فور ای بک بریکنگ شیفت His children make the most of their circumstances, playing with kids from another family, also seeking safety in the capital. But each new day is a challenge for survival. Work dwindles in the winter, when the family must seek warmth in their single room, heating water in this container if there is still fuel for a shared generator when the coal inevitably runs out. اصلا روزای شیدا که شبای شیدا که ما در سه شب چهار شب چی بگه که نان دیگه ما در سری گاز مونده نشیده است نباره بکنیم مثلا ما تو یک لقمه نان سیه تر بخوریم اساس بخوریم نان خوشک است که سای جوازان کرده دیگه است برای بلاده رو میشون دادم نواته میدیم خورا که ما از این نان خوشک است میخوریم برای اشتکام دیگه هیچ از این موطلا اصلا کنان وقت کنان سرکش یک این از نمال زنستان نه خدا را چی رقم بکنیم مثلا ایمون تو علی ایزوم نه زغال نه دیگر نه یک سر زغال اگر بایی میکنیم صدر پی نه وعدر پی رک و نمی خواهی بایی کجا پیدا کنه یا شوه و مقدر قیمتش از کجا پیدا کنیم نور محمد ستوری از جست ون دراب این ای سی آف سفرنگ این افغانستان But there are some who have benefited from the collapse of the Taliban regime in 2001, especially women who live in urban areas. Uh, زنان در زمان طالبان با مشکلات بسیار زیاد مواجه بوده جمله برداشت هایی که خودشان از اسلام داشتن و تعبیر هایی که واقعا نادرست بودن با مطابق با او زنان را محروم کرده بودن از ابتدایی ترین حقوقشان از برخورداری از وضعیت خوب صحی و برخورداری از خدمات صحی عدم و برخورداری از کار و فعالیت در بیرون از خانه و خصوصا الان خصوص موضوع تعلیم و تربیه بود که به خانم ها به هیچ عنوان اجازه رفتن به مکاتب به دختران داده نمیشد The US recently agreed to withdraw all forces within 14 months in return for a Taliban pledge to keep violence low and not harbor foreign extremist groups like ISIL It has raised the prospect of meaningful dialogue between the Taliban and the Afghan government, and of peace, but also of what a compromise with the militants might mean, especially for women. نگرانی هایی که وجود دارد از حضور احتمالی طالبان و پیوستنشان با جامعه افغانستان میتونیم یکی از بزرگترینشان برای خانم ها بحث محرومیت از بودن در فضای اجتماعی و باز هم بسته شدن در خانه ها و در Concerns reinforced by the fact that since the US Taliban agreement was signed in Doha the militant group has become more belligerent ان شاء الله و رحمان ما خودی ما می توانیم که کنترل افغانستان را بگیریم. ایش به ایش دولت ما ایش چیز نداریم که برای ما یا کمک یا چیزی بده خودی ما می توانیم که اما افغانستان را کنترل کنیم. It's estimated the Taliban currently control about two thirds of the Afghan countryside. او خاطر بحث بیشتر ممانعت ایجاد کردن در آموزش و پرورش و همون قسمی که می‌بینیم فعلا بیشتر نقاط افغانستان مناطقی که تحت سلطه طالبان و سایر گروه های شورشی هستند به اطفال طبقه اون از خصوصا به دختران اجازه رفتن به مکتب داده نمیشه. There is also widespread distrust of Afghanistan's political establishment. Allegations of corruption and vote rigging have only grown over the past 18 years. Noor Muhammad does not think he will be able to return home anytime soon. Nor does he expect stability or prosperity in the capital. پادشاهی شو مثلا آرامی شو طالب و بره و مثلا جنگ باشه و میدوان سیمبالی وطن خود بریم زندگی بکنیم 
بالاخره هم نشد دیگه چاره نیست دیگه رفتن نمیشه اینا میگه استون میشیم دیگه نه البته می کابل میره در حد پیداتون است اینا سینا سینا نمی استاد هستیم میگه بالاخره باز از اونجایی که بودیش خوب تر است که میخواست کاروبار پیدا میشه بالاخره یک مسلمان مثلا این بود خدا من نشد از اون که بسیار مشکل شده می مونم میبرم در دوسرا گوشت کنم میشونم در گشت که مونم در حد اون آیا مسلمان پایش قطع از میته بالاخره میخورم یا مثلا کار دیگه میکنم بالاخره نمیشه یا چاره کی نیست وقتی که من من آدم باید میتونه for the time being, coffin sellers also expect trade to stay strong. رهبران سیاسی یا کسایی که در قدرت هستند یا همیشه به خاطر منافع شخصی خود از مردم استفاده میکنن و این وطن را دیگه نمیده یک حالت که رسانده می کسایی از چارتایی که به خاطر منافع قدرت خود به خاطر منافع کسی که در قدرت باقی ببانند امی علت شد که نمی وطن نمی یک حالت بدبختی و بیشارگی قرار گرفته و ایش تو یک هیچ فردی وطن اتو یک امیدواری نداره که بیادر به آینده این مملکت که بگه یعنی آینده از این مملکت خوب شده میره چون روز در روز از 2009 و ده تا 2014 هم یک امیدواری بود میگفتن بعد از 2014 شاید خوبتر شد ولی از 2014 و بعد تا فعلا که 2019 است روز در روز بدتر شده و فعلا هم که در اصلا انتخابات ما شما قرار داریم یک انتخابات سعی که مثلا سه ما شو کنه با بمباس رفته و روان است دیگه کدوم امیدواری نخیر نیست If and when there is peace the road to recovery for Afghanistan may take as long or even longer than the back to back wars entire generations have been born into and are still enduring Jack Barton in Kabul for Assignment Asia. It will take years for Afghanistan's wounds to heal as the Taliban considers the existing government illegitimate. Next on Assignment Asia, farmers in Australia fighting personal battles. Stories of Hope triumph, innovation, and change. We uncover the truth and go great lengths to tell a story. Get to know ordinary people with extraordinary stories and see Asia from an Asian perspective. This is Assignment Asia. Expect the unexpected. In Australia's farming community, many farmers aren't getting the help they need to cope with the enormous pressures that come with the job. As a result, Australian farmers are twice as likely to take their own lives as the general population. A warning, some of what you're about to hear may be distressing. The rolling farms along eastern Victoria helped to paint a picture of a rustic lifestyle where people coax and shape the land. What's sometimes hidden from that idyllic view is a dark side. I'll never forget the moment that the phone call happened and um, they just rang and said, your dad's been found hanging in a tree. where the land takes much more than the people who shape it have to offer. It was grabbing me every day. It would grab, the, the grass would grab harder and tighter to the, to the day where, you know, for me, it was the only way out was to take my life. I could picture myself hanging off the raft there, hanging myself. I could picture myself, I, you know, you used to drive and you think, you know, you plough straight into a tree. 53-year-old Joe Magetta was born into farming, raised on his family's dairy farm in Warrigal. Magetta decided to buy his own farm at the age of 25. It's okay to, to milk with your father and help him, but sure, you've got your basic skills, but you've still got to learn a lot of stuff. Over the next four years, the pressures that come with running a farm began to mount. The long days, trying to manage hundreds of cows in the weather and trying to turn a profit. I look back now and I, I believe I was starting to struggle um, because I was here on my own. 
Isolation is a big issue for most farmers, no matter where they live, often covering vast tracts of land over very long days with very little human interaction. The nearest town from where I'm standing right now is less than a five minutes drive away. But when you're out here like this, you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. And more importantly, you feel like you're all alone. Magetto believes that isolation was one of the key factors that added to the mental illness that was beginning to manifest itself. You've got these negative thoughts, you, you can't talk to your tractor, it's not going to answer you back. I certainly, you know, pulled my hair out and, 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 and cried sometimes in the, in the cabin of the tractor, I did that a bit. Um, so it's really the loneliness and, and, you've, and, and the thoughts of being by yourself and, and um, really nobody to talk to. The son of Italian immigrants told no one of his struggles. You bailing me out today, Doc? Especially his family, instead creating an image of a tough, capable farmer who was managing the business and himself. But he wasn't managing. About five years into running his own farm, the negative thoughts and dark periods became more frequent and more extreme. It was just uh, one of those times that the guns are lying around and the bullets are just lying around. And I just picked it up out of the shed. I can remember picking it up out of the shed and just carrying it around. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to use these on me. I knew it was there every day. I knew it was there. Once I changed my overalls or something to get washed or whatever it was, I'd take it out quietly and, um, and, and stick it in the new pair. And off you go. Weeks went by, carrying the bullet meant to end his life, until one day, Maghetto was confronted by his brother, Alan. My brother, he turned up here one day, I was getting the cows along the road. I said, uh, I said, you know, you've got to start learning to settle down, and you know, we, you know we're, all, we're all here for you, that sort of stuff. And next minute, he just pulled, pulls a bullet out of his pocket and say, says, see this? I said, I'm going to use this on me, I'm going to use this bullet on me. Then I thought, this ain't right, something's going to happen here. And so I thought, I'd better do something about it. So I just did. I just went straight to the police. There was nowhere, there was, there was nowhere else I could think to go. Within 20 minutes, I had the police here at the shed here. Um, and they just pulled me out from the shed. And um, we had a talk. Um, I had to hand a bullet over. Um, and they confiscated the guns. The immediate threat was gone, but Megato's silent struggles continued, even after he got married in 2003. Yeah, so we still up when I went to milk. Eventually, he opened up to his wife and began seeing a psychologist for depression. But Megato says the person who had the most impact was his own doctor, a general practitioner who's a neighbor and, more importantly, understands the demands and the pressures that come with farming. I continue to get dark times. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm a believer that You'll never get over it, but you've just got to learn to manage it. I'm managing it now. Part of Joe Maghetto's continued recovery can be traced to Sally Jones. You are a lady. Looks like you're having some pretty serious conversations. Well, the daughter of a dairy farmer whose life has also been touched dad. Dad me. by that dark, unspoken side to farming on this dried up land. Automatically, you would feel welcomed by him. You would feel warm. You would you would feel his authenticity. He just had a real presence about him. Michael Bowen battled mental illness, including depression, for years while running a dairy farm in Lakes Entrance. In 2016, that illness had taken a visible toll. Physically, he looked fine, but he just wouldn't leave the house. He thought our house was bugged. He thought people were listening into his conversations. He was suspicious. He thought people were watching him in the paddock. It was, it was insane. And then we... Um, I was driving him in the car and I said, Dad, are you suicidal? And he just looked at me and looked at the ground and then just looked at me and that was a yes without the words. And I just thought to myself, I'm just going to pretend that, that I didn't see that for what it was and I awkwardly just sort of moved on with the conversation.
Two weeks later, the 53-year-old father and grandfather carried out one final and deliberate chore. My mum called me at about three o'clock in the afternoon and she said, have you seen dad? And I said, no. Uh, I said, I think, I think he's with you, isn't he? And she said, I haven't seen him all day. The police were called. A massive search was launched across the farm. That search ended the next day with the discovery of Michael Bowen's body hanging from a tree on the property where he had spent a lifetime working. It doesn't really sink in like... Um, yeah, that doesn't happen. Like that, my, I knew my dad's views on suicide. We had many conversations about that and he couldn't understand how someone could take their own life. So I know that my dad, it wasn't like a sign of weakness and he was like, I want to end my life. It was like, things must have been that bad for him that he believed that he was truly doing us a favour by exiting. That's hard, you know, and yeah, the ripple effect that it's had in our community and within our family and just devastating. For Jones, that devastation included wondering what would have happened if she had acted on the conversation with her father. I've had to move on with that. I can't hold myself up because what's happened's happened. And it's now how I choose to respond to the situation that's happened. Pack them in. Jones decided to open a milk processing plant on the family farm dedicated to helping Come local on. farmers get a fair price for their milk, something she says We've her father was times. very passionate about. She also chose to focus on their mental health. I was not going to let Dad's suicidal death define his life, so instead I was going to somehow find the good in it and to create change because it has to stop. The stats in Australia are ridiculous for rural men in mental health. Australian farmers are twice as likely to commit suicide as the country's general population. In some parts of the country where the drought's grip is even firmer, it's believed that rate is even higher. He's got dirt. He needs hay. Can you put him on the list? Retired farmer Ray Akers delivers hay to drought-affected farmers to help them feed their stock. Farmers who often are struggling to cope. It's just a pressure's on them, and it, it, it could be a simple thing. You might have a, a bit of an argument with the wife because there's a bit of tension. Uh, he goes down the paddock and he sees his cattle suffering or his sheep bogged in the dam, and uh, just something twists, just you know, just like that, and uh, get out of this. And and the biggest trouble with farmers, we've we've got the access to guns, plenty of rope in the shed. The problem is that asking for help just as an easy and almost seen as a sign of weakness, especially by farmers who aren't used to relying on anyone and are almost programmed to try to solve any problems that arise, any issues that arise by themselves. So this is Aaron and he's got two little girls. Sally Jones wanted to let farmers know that help was out there and more importantly, there were people just like them struggling with the same kind of issues. So she came up with the idea for a calendar, each month featuring a farmer who struggled with mental health issues. The goal was to distribute them to as many farming families across the area as possible. I must admit, I think a lot of the farmers were just feeling hugely anxious about putting themselves out there. Because there is still this old thing that if you put your hand up, that you're weak. Joe, can you pull your car up? One of the farmers Sally reached out to was Joe Magetta. I remember it was an awkward conversation. I didn't know this man. Um, Oh, I might have, um, yeah, well, I've been battling a bit. And that was the door, like, that was how it all started. He, he, and then he, we had hours of talking on the phone and just downloading to me before he got to the point that he would agree to do the calendar. Hello. And following the success of the first calendar and the way Jones says that it got farmers talking about suicide and mental health, she recently launched a second calendar. This calendar tells 13 amazing stories. At an event that brought all of the farmers together who shared their stories. All right, beautiful. Look at me. 
stories that are tough to listen to. Walked over to my workshop where I had a, I had a gun that I had um, there to put down animals or, or whatever. And I remember I, I loaded it the night before because um, I knew the day was gonna the day was coming. Uh, I'd been working myself up to it. I'm, it wasn't far away. And I just remember I walked in there and I just unlocked it all, got the gun out, put it in my mouth. And um, the only reason I didn't pull the trigger is because a bloke, uh, a rep who looks after the farm's chemicals came up the driveway. The farmer who had kept his own struggles silent for so long has now become one of the project's most vocal supporters. There's one thing I've learned in the last 18 months since I've been here with his calendar is that going up, introduce myself, stand up, mate. Stand up, stand up, mate. You've taken a brave step and gives us a cuddle. These farmers are so brave speaking out because they're the change makers. Um, we have created a platform for them to share their story and for them to stand up in their own communities and say it's okay to get help. And just by doing this calendar here, you've taken that first step to open up about it. Health professionals believe the idea of farmers helping farmers is the kind of approach that's often missing in addressing rural suicide. You know, if you keep telling farmers that they need to go to the white coat, that's one thing. But if a farmer tells another farmer that they understand what they're going through and that they've been through it, that's what has the most effect. It's tough to gauge the extent of the problem among rural populations. But Sally Jones and others will tell you from experience that it's a lot more prominent than most people can imagine. I have had numerous texts and messages at 3 a.m. in the morning from suicidal farmers and have had many adventures of going and showing up and being on the coal face essentially. But this is not, I'm not trained in this, this is not my job, but um, I think just with what we're doing and people understanding those lived experiences that they just reach out. Joe Maggetto believes that reaching out to other farmers has become an important part of his own journey. I look at this now, right here, right now, and, and this is medication for me. It's a relief, and the more I do it, the more I talk about it, the more people are saying to me that, um, you know, you're becoming an ambassador for mental health. Now, I don't, I don't really look at it that way. I'm, I'm looking at it as it's helping me. The ghetto says he's learning how to better cope with the pressures that come with milking 240 cows twice a day every day, including the isolation. So Joe Maggetto, for example, he pays someone to show up to his farm at 4 a.m. so that he's not lonely. Clever. It might cost him a few bucks, but he's made that financial decision to say, for me mentally, I understand that I get lonely in you know, doing what I do. So he's put something in place that's proactive that helps him to manage that. Maggetto says he spends much more time enjoying his job and the people around him. So what time's blood coming home? than he does in the darkness that came so close to ending his life. Join us again on Assignment Asia. Follow us on social media to contribute stories or share your thoughts.